Did you ever consider that there's a possibility the episode Barnacle Face has been carefully set up to cover up something completely different? I've been using soap made out of ceramic butter! Now I know this episode is far from the golden age of Spongebob, but it's one of my favorites from season 8. <laughs> The episode kicks off with Pearl gearing up for the big school dance, all excited and everything. She spots a barnacle on her face and freaks out big time. Her friend tries to downplay it, but Pearl's practically having an earthquake over the barnacle situation. Then enters Mr. Krabs, who's equally horrified by this barnacle. He tries to help but draws the line at shelling out loads of money for fancy treatments. So who does he turn to for help? None other than SpongeBob. SpongeBob goes all out trying to remove this stubborn barnacle, first with a spatula, then a shovel, and even a jackhammer. Things go from bad to worse when more barnacles sprout up after Pearl washes her face with soap. Poor Pearl locks herself away distraught while SpongeBob decides to cover up the barnacles with facial cream, but it ends up looking like a disaster. Pearl can't even talk properly. <laughs> No, I think one jar of concealing cream is enough. Kind of turns out that the soap bars used in Mr. Krabs' home are made of, wait for it, freaking Krabby Patties. She runs on 100% pure leftover Krabby Patties. Mm -hmm. Pearl realizes she's been washing her face with grease and lets Krabs have it. Furious, she gives up on removing the barnacles. This is because the barnacles fed on the grease and created some colony looking hive all over it. In reality, barnacles brood fertilized eggs within their shells. Since they have no gills and body walls, they multiply. It's a freaking parasite. She tried to get rid of it, but just as how we try to get rid of some people who we feel are parasitic and only benefiting from us, it appeared impossible. But here's where things get sparkly. Inspired by Pearl's desire to sparkle for the dance, SpongeBob gets creative. He decks her out in Mr. Krabs' precious jewels to cover up those barnacles. Her friends are dazzled. They head to the dance and Mr. Krabs is left sprinting after Pearl, who's wearing his entire jewel collection. In the episode, accidents will happen where Squidward mysteriously vanishes from his post. Customers were raging, and Mr. Krabs was hunting frantically for him. SpongeBob! Where in Poseidon's pantyhoses that sorry excuse for a cashier? If you're familiar with this cartoon series, you'll know that Squidward has a track record of making unfortunate choices, and his decision to take an undue break during his shift was one of them. There's a loud thud, a pile of buns, and Squidward emerging with a twisted ankle. Now, this part where Squidward twists his ankle, it's it's like the tip of the iceberg. He's milking the situation, and Mr. Krabs, terrified of fines, is catering to his every desire. Pillow fluffing, tea serving, you name it. Meanwhile, SpongeBob and Patrick are on a sneaky mission, trying to uncover the truth about Squidward's accident. But their sleuthing skills? Let's just say they're a bit comical. I'll pretend you're Squidward, and reach for a bun. And I'll simulate the shelf hitting Squidward. <laughs> okay, so Squidward's sunbathing on the roof, sipping tea, while Mr. Krabs is on Squidward's beck and Call. It was driving Mr. Krabs crazy. He even had to massage Squidward's ankle with fry grease. But here's where it goes south. Mr. Krabs, with greasy hands, cooks a patty, making a customer sick, and so chaos started to brood. Um, aren't you gonna wash your mouth? <laughs> Just when things you'd think wouldn't get worse, an inspector from the office worker's safety department shows up. Squidward spins this elaborate tale about a missing seed on a patty bun, blaming it for the chaos. But surprise, Mr. Krabs pulls out a surveillance tape. Turns out Squidward was caught red-handed, sleeping on the job. Mr. Krabs loses it and flips the tables on Squidward. <laughs> It wraps up with Squidward reluctantly popping Mr. Krabs' back barnacles payback for all his shenanigans. Mr. Krabs and Squidward had to pop back barnacles off of each other till the barnacles were gone. Parasites, obviously. Simply see it that Mr. Krabs, Pearl, and Squidward had barnacles on their skin, meaning they are all parasites in the sense that they all just use SpongeBob and others around them for their own benefit and what will satisfy their needs. Like how Pearl disturbs Mr. Krabs only when she's in need of something like a spa treatment, expensive of tickets to vacations, money to buy jewelries, Mr. Krabs takes advantage of SpongeBob when he wants something and doesn't give him a raise even if he risks his life to get what Mr. Krabs wants. What in the name of all that's crazy have you been doing all day? You're going right back out there until you sell a penny!
It's like how people meet others to help them only when they are in need, and after the job is done, you don't hear from them again. They are parasitic people, and these scenes were made to show the way people are, and how you might feel. They have true intentions, but their requests are simply self-serving. The creators of Spongebob were showing us the true reality of the society and the different personalities we have, especially those who are self-pleasing. What if I told you there's more to barnacles than all I've been saying? Let me tell you something else about the barnacles I'm sure you have no idea about. It's rather a crucial part of SpongeBob's marine world. A scene in Something Smells, SpongeBob wakes up all thrilled for a Sunday treat, planning to have an ice cream sundae for breakfast. Whoops, looks like we're out of ice cream. Guess I'll have to use something else. He goes rogue and whips up this bizarre concoction of onions, ketchup, and almost dead peanut plants. Although SpongeBob was not the mastermind behind the most valuable recipe in Bikini Bottom, he was able to create a dish emanating the most gruesome fragrances. <sighs> SpongeBob, being his usual cheery self, heads out to say hi to everyone in town as part of his to-do list. But guess what? People run away. Poor guy gets confused and turns to Patrick, who, being noseless, is no help and accidentally concludes SpongeBob's just plain ugly. Maybe it's just because you're ugly. Ugly. SpongeBob, all upset, turns into a hermit until Patrick tells him this story about the ugly barnacle, trying to cheer him up. It doesn't work at first, but eventually Patrick convinces SpongeBob to embrace his uniqueness, so they decide to hit the movie. This incident does remind me of another ugly creature, the ugly duckling. So there's this bird, right? Super awkward, wandering around, looking like it's not quite sure what bird club it belongs to. It's not winning any beauty pageants, that's for sure. Feathers all askew, not fitting in with the cool bird crew. But here's the twist. Turns out that dorky bird is actually a swan. Yeah, a majestic, elegant swan, not the goofy duckling it thought it was. Imagine the look on the other bird's faces when this scrappy little weirdo transforms into a stunning, graceful swan. It's like a bird version of a makeover reality show. It also hits in Spongebob's case he later realizes why everyone was avoiding him and accepts the fact that it was his homemade sundae that made his breath stink. To unveil the actual truth in the Spongebob episode Sailor Mouth, Spongebob and Patrick learn a word they think is a sentence enhancer from a dumpster behind the Krusty Krab. That word ends up being a euphemism for various cuss words including barnacles. As they start using it, it causes quite a stir until Mr. Krabs intervenes and teaches Spongebob and Patrick about the true nature of the word. The episode humorously addresses the use of swear words and the power of language. It shows barnacles being referenced as a colloquial insult. Did you notice that they use nautical sea-related stand-ins for actual swear words like, oh for cod's sake, what the halibut, holy shrimps, who gives a flying fish? Barnacles became a cuss word in SpongeBob, which was popular with the kids from the 90s. It started from season one, and everyone in Bikini Bottom had a sentence or two to say that included the words such as, oh barnacles, what the barnacles is going on? Barnacle head. I don't give a barnacle. So you all can go and eat barnacles and of course, barnacles. In the grand scheme of Bikini Bottom, barnacles are more than just a comedic plot device. They're a metaphor for the unseen, often ignored truths of our world. Throughout the series, barnacles symbolize the unappealing, the overlooked, and the misunderstood aspects of life. They represent the gritty reality beneath the surface of seemingly mundane situations. From Pearl's struggle with self-image to Squidward's foe, injury, barnacles are always there, lurking in the background, a constant reminder of the hidden layers of everyday life. 